Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and my dear friends. A warm welcome as we embark upon the 16th edition of the annual Science and Technology Festival. IIT Bombay and Virginia Name Solutions present Techfest 2013, powered by Hindustan Giants, in association with Mahindra Rice, filled by Prime Big CBS. With the motto of promoting technology, scientific thinking, and innovation, Techfest has passed 15 golden editions, and today, it is a body working for the betterment of society in general and students in particular under the patronage of UNESCO. With fierce competition among students from across India and abroad, display of cutting-edge technology, motivational speeches to inspire the youth, and workshops to sharpen the skills, Techfest today is a wholesome platform that students across India can look up to. With various social initiatives and campaigns, like Green Campus Challenge, Give a coin. Techfest aims at grouping together the power of youth towards a better and a sustainable India. Today we are pleased to have a special person with us, Osamu Hasekawa, who is a Japanese researcher in the fields of computer science and robotics at Tokyo Institute of Technology. As the principal investigator of the Imaging Science and Engineering Laboratory, he is leading a research group to further develop and innovate self-organizing incremental neural network. In addition to being a PI, he is an appointed associate professor in the Department of Computational Intelligence and System Science, a position that he has held since 2002. Although Professor Hasegawa's research interest spans across several categories, SOIN will be presented today. SOIN is an unsupervised online learning method capable of incremental learning. By approximating the distribution of input data and the number of classes, a self-organized network is formed. SOIN offers the following advantages. Network formation is not required to be predetermined beforehand, high robustness to noise, and reduced computational cost. Lastly, Professor Hasegawa and his students will give a demonstration of Hero, a humanoid robot controlled by SOIN showing the link between algorithm, brain, and machine task tasking. Today, Professor Hasegawa will present his inspiration for creating SOIN, as well as its future usage. It is a matter of great pleasure that Professor Hasegawa has agreed upon speaking on SOIN, an artificial brain for intelligent autonomous agents, and thus sharing with us his great knowledge, enthusiasm, and experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor Hasegawa. Very well. 
uh, this video is published uh, publicly available on YouTube, and the link is on the TechFest exhibition homepage for our logo. So please start the video. <laughs> This robot can think, learn, and act by itself using artificial intelligence. It is being developed by the Hasegawa Group at the Tokyo Institute of Technology, using a technology called a self-replicating neural network, or SOIN. It can think as humans do when taking on tasks that it has never done before. It can make educated guesses and decisions based on its past experiences and knowledge. In this experiment, the robot will solve a problem by deciding what actions it should take and in what order. The robot will be told to pour a glass of water and will decide how to do this while being aware of its surroundings and its own situation. いうことになってしまいます。で、このロボットはその基本的な知識をだけを覚えていて、その知識を今目の前にある状況に自力で適用させる、転移させて対応するっていうことができる枠組みを持っていまして、で、その過程でもしえっと足りない知識が出てきます
were reported near many, many air sources, such as uh, Washington Post and uh, uh, CBS News and so on. And, uh, uh, and we brought uh, this robot to Texas from Japan. That, that robot, we brought it to uh, Texas. So a live demo including automatic learning from the internet. I have introduced uh, this feature of the robot as a feature scenario in that video, but we have realized that. And uh, you can see how it works in the live demo. And uh, we will demonstrate our robot at the ex exhibition session to the tech press for three days. So please visit our booth. And uh, now uh, I'd like to uh, outline sewing, uh, which is an abbreviation of self-organizing incremental neural network. Uh, unlike conventional artificial intelligence technologies, sewing is both trainable and uh, general purpose, uh, and uh, can learn very fast from both the real world and the internet without without extensive programming. The first important advantage of sewing is that a user does not need to define a mathematical model for learning. A sewing can generate a model for learning by itself. In addition to that, a sewing can update the model corresponding to the changes in the input data in an online and incremental manner. The second important advantage of uh, sewing uh, is that it can automatically eliminate noise. In the real world and on the internet, there, are, there often uh, exist unreliable and or false data. So it can automatically eliminate such, uh, most of such data as noise. Now I'd like to show you a live demo of sewing. Uh, this is uh, 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 we run sewing on this notebook PC, uh, laptop PC. The left window here is the input data, including tempers and noise. Uh, the right window is the learned result of sewing, the sewing networks here. As you can see, sewing can learn very fast uh, with this speed on this laptop computer. And uh, uh, in other words, it can find any type of uh, distributions, including uh, like this, uh, the circles and the Gaussians. And can you ask? So if he adds a new data like this, so he immediately, immediately learns uh, this distribution corresponding to the input data. And, uh, uh, you also notice that the color of the clusters is different, like this, like this. Uh, this means Soin recognize, recognizes uh, these are different and independent clusters. Therefore, in this case, Soin recognizes that there are five different clusters in the input data, one, two, three, four, five. And, uh, and as you see, I think uh, there are some noise uh, in the input data, but in the output of sewing, you cannot see any noise. So uh, sewing can automatically eliminate uh, noise. Uh, sewing can learn any type of numerical learning vectors, such as sensory data of robots, images, sounds, text, and uh, uh, sales data for business. So any data. And, uh, so, uh, so you can uh, learn uh, this type of distribution like this. In addition, uh, learning is completed with a standard PC like this uh, within a few minutes. Uh, even if the number of dimension of the numerical value vector is in tens of thousands, uh, there is no other machine learning algorithm as far as we know uh, that can perform such flexible and high-speed learning.
As a real-world example, uh, please consider the process through which a stranger becomes an intimate friend. Initially, we know nothing about him or her. Uh, that is, we have no model of this person. <laughs> However, through interaction with them, we gradually learn the models of him or her, uh, characters, lifestyles, and way of thinking, and so on. Uh, during this process, uh, we must distinguish what we must remember about the person from primitive uh, trivialities, in other words, noise, uh, that we should forget. A uh, learning mechanism of sewing resembles this. So, now I would like to uh, online, uh, outline the learning algorithm of sewing. In this demo, we suppose the input vector data are two-dimensional so as to display the learning process. At first, uh, there are only two neurons in the sewing space, shown with the uh, blue dots and given in the uh, sewing space, like this. Now, a training data or learning data comes. Uh, like this, shown uh, with a pink dot, is input to the sewing space. Sewing calculates the distance between the input data and the neurons and, uh, uh, and finds both the nearest and the second nearest neurons. In this case, these neurons are uh, nearest and second nearest neurons. We call these neurons the first and second winners, respectively. Then, sewing generates circles whose radii are the distance between the first neuron and second, first winner and second winner. When these circles contain the input data, the nearest neuron, uh, in this case, this one, this one is the nearest neuron, uh, moves slightly toward the input data like this. When these circles do not contain input data, like this, uh, so it generates a new neuron at that position, like this. Uh, this neuron has a lifetime. If a neuron cannot be connected to uh, the other neuron during its lifetime, the neuron dies and disappears, like this, like this. This is why sewing can eliminate noise automatically. In this example, in this example, sewing generates these clusters. Uh, corresponding to the input data and recognize that uh, there are uh, two clusters. If uh, it is not necessary for users to give the number of such clusters or the number of neurons to sewing beforehand, sewing determines the number of clusters and the neuron, number of neurons uh, by itself. These parameters are automatically determined and updated by sewing in an online and incremental manner. As we mentioned, uh, as we mentioned, sewing can learn distributions of any size and any shape and display the latest state of to a user. In addition to that, on the basis of the generated networks, sewing can perform intelligent information processing such as uh, recognition and association among knowledges and even reasoning. Because uh, sewing is an algorithm, so uh, any computer language can describe it. Therefore, uh, we can implement sewing on widespread computing hardware, including robots. In the future, we anticipate that uh, many people will be owners of personal sewing and carry it anywhere and any uh, anytime and anywhere with smart well hardware. Now uh, we'd like to present the second demo of sewing. Uh, do you 
you know how a marketing camp looks like? So uh, we didn't know. So uh, we Japanese don't drink uh, uh, Monday tea uh, much. So uh, if you don't know uh, how the Monday tea cup looks like, I think you will search the images uh, of the Monday tea cup like this. So this is a Google image search, the result of the Google image search. <laughs> and then you will know the appearance and appearances of Matheti Cup, how the Matheti Cup looks like. <coughs> Here, importantly, there are not only cup images. That is, there are many non Matheti Cup images. So, this like this, and so on. Our brain can eliminate uh, these non-magnetic cup images as noise unconsciously and can learn magnetic cup, how it looks like correctly. Sony can do the uh, very similar thing like this. And uh, uh, here, uh, here. Now, uh, the, uh, we installed Sewing algorithm on this laptop. And now, uh, can you please switch on the light? Uh, so, so uh, now uh, we now we take now uh our lab computer uh does not know of marketing cup so now he takes a uh, picture of the Matheti cup. I guess this is a pen. So uh, this is the, uh, oh, the wrong answer. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the system collects the images of Matheti cup from the internet. And now, uh, this, this is the key for learning. So now uh, the learning has been completed. Yeah. Now let's try again. I guess this is a made tea cup. Yeah, this is a <laughs> Uh, from these images. These images 
uh, we plotted the images uh, uh, yesterday uh, from the net. So, uh, as you see, there are many uh, different types of reach up uh, the our point, a large uh, reach of how the reach looks like. Well, okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. I guess this is a rich show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we can say that, uh, uh, as you see, all we need to uh, do is to give a keyword uh, to the point and so you automatically collect the images using the Google image or uh, uh, some other search engines and uh, learn how it looks like uh, automatically. Yes. And in a few seconds, as you see, a few seconds. Once uh, the uh, learning process is complete, uh, so you can recognize the object in front of the camera. So we think in the near future, uh, all robots will have such uh, intelligence. So if the robot don't know the object, uh, we can give them some keywords. So I want to drink a cup of uh, coffee, and uh, if the robot don't know uh, what the coffee is, the robot automatically searches how the coffee looks like, the coffee cup looks like, and what the coffee is. And uh, uh, in the future, the robot will make a copy for us, I think. Now, uh, I'd like to explain about our sewing robot. In recent years, in Japan, the number of elderly people increases very rapidly. Uh, so the necessary necessity for robot which care the elderly people also increases. So the, uh, in, in the city, only two people need to support the one elderly people. That's a big problem for us. And uh, therefore, in Japan, development of a general purpose robot for home use that can uh, execute various tasks by command uh, has become a very important research topic. As you know, uh, currently, if we want a robot to execute some tasks, we must program it uh, appropriately. However, uh, however, it is impractical and impossible to individually program all tasks of every robot located in the homes of elderly people. Therefore, uh, we must develop a robot that can perform uh, the following action without uh, the need for programming. So understand the voice command. So uh, if we talk to the robot and the robot understands what it should do, it's very convenient and uh, uh, learn autonomously from the internet if needed and uh, generate the procedure to accomplish the task. So if the robot can do things, it's very helpful for humans. On the other hand, uh, there are enormous number of objects uh, and tasks in the real world. However, there are very, very uh, dirty uh, laboratory <laughs> Our, don't you know, but, uh, uh, there are a lot of objects and uh, many tasks in the real world and observe data from them contain much unpredictable points. So that's a big problem. Uh, we try to solve this difficult problem uh, by a uh, sewing based transfer value uh, using uh, self-collected data from the Here, I'd like to briefly explain transfer learning. What is transfer learning? As you know, uh, recent uh, digital cameras have face detection technologies like this. And using this technology, a camera can promptly detect faces in an image. Uh, to realize the technology, engineers collect a very large number of face images. Uh, these included uh, face images of Adults and children, 
males, females, all races, and uh, are both with and without glasses, mouse cultures, and bears, and so on, so on. Many, many. We need many images. Uh, these images were input to a computer in order to learn the appearances, appearances of face, human faces. In most cases, uh, the learning process takes uh, more than 10 days to, to learn the face. The major problem of this approach is that uh, a large amount of data are uh, required for learning. Uh, multiply this by all the objects in our daily life. And it is clear that uh, this approach is not realistic. We think uh, that sewing-based transfer learning will be one of the promising approaches for solving this problem. For example, uh, if we want a computer to recognize a microwave oven like this, uh, by a conventional approach, we would need to collect a large number of various microwave open images for learning and let the computer learn for many days. On the other hand, uh, in the transfer learning approach, we let the computer recognize the microwave oven as a square, white, white color object that has a dial and a buzzer that sound. Wow. <laughs> 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 uh, in other words, uh, we let the computer learn basic knowledge about the real world, uh, such as shape and the color, sound, hardness, weight, and uh, weight beforehand, and then let the computer. So we, we uh, teach the computer uh, these uh, fundamental and basic knowledge. So uh, we, we teach the robot uh, or the computer the uh, color and uh, shape and uh, uh, weight and uh, uh, hardness and so on. And uh, uh, let the computer uh, recognize objects by a combination of such uh, basic activities knowledge. So uh, this, res uh, this resembles the relationship between the alphabet and the dictionary. In the case of English, there are only 26 kinds of alphabetic characters, but a vast number of words are constructed by their combination. It's only 26 uh, uh, construct, uh, very huge number of words. Theoretically, by this approach, the computer can recognize large numbers of objects in the real world by learning fewer basic and fundamental facts. So, uh, the other very important advantage of the transfer learning approach is that the computer can guess an unknown, ob unknown object. Please imagine that you go to a supermarket in Japan. So um, most, of, most of people here probably <coughs> do not know Japanese. So you will see uh, these in the supermarket. Therefore, if you see a product sold in the supermarket with a description written in Japanese like this, uh, you do not uh, understand exactly what it is. However, I think uh, you could categorize what it is as maybe a kind of orange juice or a sunbeam or a bathroom or you can guess the thing. This is because all of you have learned basic and fundamental facts from your daily life in India and can transfer such knowledge to a Japanese environment. In other words, uh, everyone acquires basic and fundamental knowledge from birth, uh, such as weight of various things, colors, textures, sounds, smells, taste, uh, through everyday life. Thanks to this knowledge, by the time we are adults, we can robustly recognize the real world. 
in Japan, there is a, uh, an appropriate uh, proverb that child is the father of the man. We learn from uh, childhood a lot, and uh, we transfer that knowledge uh, to the real world. This slide shows the transfer learning approach using SOIN. Uh, in this talk, we don't have enough time to explain this uh, detail, this slide. But uh, if you would like to know more about this, please come to the SOIN robot demonstration booth. And uh, uh, we are very happy to explain the details of this. This slide shows the architecture of the sewing based multimodal transfer learning mechanism, which is installed on our robot. Our sewing robot can gain a basic and fundamental knowledge about the real world through uh, sensors attached to its body, like this. Uh, such as CCD cameras, microphones, pressure sensors, weight sensors, and temperature sensors. And uh, uh, by actively using the learned multimodal knowledge, the sewing robot can guess uh, unknown objects. This slide shows an example. For example, let us suppose a user wants a can, can of soda, and there is an open can in front of the sewing robot. It is difficult for the robot to know where the, the can is full of soda or not just by looking at it in front from in front uh, uh, just looking at it from the outside. Therefore, uh, the robot picks up the can and tests its weight to know uh, about where it is full or not. Uh, and or examines it by waving the can and listen to the sound. So uh, we commonly perform uh, these kind of actions in our daily life, and our robot uh, do the very similar thing like this. And uh, we anticipate that in the near future, robots for home use will have intelligence of this kind. So in this slide, we see beautiful balls, probably made of marble. However, recently, plastic balls have been beautifully printed with genuine marble textures. It is very difficult to identify them just by looking. In such cases, if you would like to know, uh, if you would like to determine whether the wall is made of genuine marble or not, you would probably knock right? and hear the sound. And uh, at the wall and listen to the sound and then determine it. In other words, uh, because we have many modalities such as seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, and others, uh, we can understand the world effectively and more accurately. The very important point here is that the sewing robot can learn basic facts such as a can that contains something make a sound if it is weighed uh, separately in different situations. The sewing based transfer learning requires a very short time for learning and very small memory space for knowledge. So actually this is the uh, result uh, of the transfer learning, uh, sewing based transfer learning. Uh, this is the result presented at CDPR 2009, and uh, uh, they took 70 days to learn all uh, attributes. But uh, by using our method, uh, we took only 70 days by using uh, uh, <laughs> And uh, uh, for testing, uh, the, in the CDPR paper, they took two days that uh, we used only 90 seconds. So, so we can wait for uh, 7 minutes or uh, 90 seconds, but we cannot wait for 7 
debates. <laughs> so, uh, a robot should record the life tax uh, that should be used on the basis of the situation. We developed an approach called uh, RWGES, Real World General Problem Solver. And uh, uh, we installed that uh, RWGES on our robot, and the robot can solve uh, this problem. <coughs> Therefore, we can say uh, that our sign robot has enough, enough ability to guess unknown objects in the real world by using multimodalities and to generate an appro appropriate action sequence to achieve a new, each new task given by a user. This is, uh, is an example of estimated result by sewing robot. Again, the wooden cup, uh, actually this one, yes. uh, again, the wooden cup that was a new object for the robot. This is the output from the robot. And uh, uh, the robot touch it and uh, measure the weight and the knock on the uh, cup and it hears the sound and just guess what it is. And this is the output. And uh, from this, this is the threshold and uh, uh, the robot recognizes that uh, uh, the object has a cylindrical shape and it is maybe made of wood and so uh, it's difficult to bring. So uh, the robot understood uh, this part uh, in that way. So uh, these results have been obtained by a weighted combination of the output, mainly from 3D and sound sensors. So the weight for com such combinations is learned by itself, by the robot, through the experiences of the ro uh, robot in the real world. So they, uh, the robot touch it and uh, hear the sound and uh, try to recognize what it is. And uh, uh, the robot uh, determines the weight uh, of the combination by itself. Here, uh, yes. As uh, uh, human beings, we share knowledge uh, via internet by using a social media such as Facebook. Uh, we think that in the near future, a robot will come to share their knowledge with other robots in a similar way. So, uh, as uh, as I said in that video. So in the near future, robots will share uh, the sense data or learn knowledge via the internet. That is to say, the robot will teach each other. Yeah, how, uh, for example, hi, I will tell you how to make a pretty sweet or something like that. And also, we cannot copy our knowledge. Or we cannot copy our knowledge directly to our the other people's brain, of course. But the sewing-based artificial brains can copy uh, the knowledge very easily. In addition, we can integrate multiple artificial brains easily, each of which contain different knowledge. So therefore, uh, therefore, in the near future, a person who has special skills such as chefs, or painters, or medical doctors, could transfer his or her skill or knowledge to an artificial brain and sell it, uh, the trained artificial brain, in on an online market similar uh, like uh, iTunes. So, maybe. So, uh, we think so. And in other words, if we want to eat high quality French dishes, we could purchase an artificial brain uh, that contains excellent French cooking skills and download it uh, to our robot at home. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when downloading is complete, our robot will be uh, able to cook high-quality French dishes for you. <laughs> In the future, a newborn baby could have his or her own artificial brain and grow up uh, with it 
while sharing personal experiences. Such highly personal artificial brains would play very important role to overcome the limitations of uh, our biological brain functions. This part is a, a biological brain, and this part is an artificial brain. And we, we think that in the future we will use both. For example, because the personal artificial brain knows everything about the owner, it will be able to control any man-made product smoothly so as to meet an owner's intentions. Therefore, we will not need to read product manuals anymore so, with patients. And our personal artificial brain would communicate with the product and send commands them directly so just we need to do is to talk to our brain. So I want to do this, and our agent will contact with the any man-made equipment and control everything. We think so. In the future, uh, we anticipate that people will be ordered for personal sewing and carrying anytime, anywhere with smart wearable hardware. Actually, in Japan, uh, Panasonic. I think you know Panasonic companies <laughs> has uh, begun to release uh, washing machines and air conditioners and other equipment, many others, uh, that can communicate with the owner's smartphone. So uh, now uh, the people in Japan can control the uh, washing machine with a smartphone. I'm not joking. <laughs> in the near future, if the owner had a personal artificial brain in the phone, so uh, it would be uh, it would control the machines to anticipate uh, the owner's intentions. <coughs> As you see in the slide, a Japanese company, Kawada Heavy Industries, built a manufacturing uh, factory uh, where many humanoid robots with human workers. Like this. This is a human robot. There are uh, many human robots. It works with human workers. The specification of this robot is uh, uh, working in this factory are uh, very similar to those of our robot, which we brought to Texas. And uh, we hope that in the future, near future, many types of sewing robot will be uh, op uh, operational in our daily life environment, such as homes and public environments. The uh, Japanese culture does not have much uh, resistance to robots, and instead, like this. Uh, uh, in our research group, many students like Doraemon. <laughs> yeah, this one. Yes. And the robots are considered as friends. Not like this. <laughs> uh, we demonstrate the sewing robot which we introduced today at the <coughs> session of the Tech Fest. Please visit our booth and see how sewing and uh, sewing robot uh, works, actually works. And uh, uh, this is the end of my talk. Thank you very much for your time.